Hey, this is Jared. And today we're going to tell you the story about a man whose life was filled with tragedy and loss, but somehow he was still able to change that experience into one of the most well-known and encouraging hymns of all Christian hymnody. That's right, it's time for another hymn history. Let's get to it. All right, this one's a winner. We're geared up, ready to go. Well, hello again. Hello, hello. And welcome to another Hymn History here on this channel, In Hymn, where we do videos on how-tos about music and ministry. And one of my favorite things to do is these Hymn History videos. And this one comes to us from Mary Archer, who says, love this. I am a new sub, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing. Uh, my favorite hymn is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Don't know if you could do a hymn history on that one or not. So my response to you, yes, we can. <laughs> so let's get to it. What a Friend We Have in Jesus is such a well-known hymn in our, in, our, in our church history. It just is. Uh, for many reasons, but I think there are several reasons why it's become so popular. Part of it is its rawness, its realness. Part of it is the tagline, this what a friend we have in Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus, that keeps coming up over and over again, you know, or to the Lord in prayer comes up over and over again. And so this repetitive nature, but the simplicity in that is so encouraging that it's been published in over, I think, 1,400 hymnals over the course since it's been, since it was originally published in 1855 till now. So it's just really, really popular, and I think that speaks to how well written and how truthful and authentic the writing was, which is interesting because of who wrote the hymn. His name was Joseph Scriven. He was a young Irishman in the 1800s, and after completing his schooling at the college in Dublin, Ireland, he moved back to his hometown just outside of Dublin, ready to face the world and ready to marry his childhood and uh, early adulthood sweetheart. Uh, on the eve of their wedding, however, tragedy struck when she fell into a river and, and drowned. She did not recover and died in that accident. Heartbroken by his loss, I think he at one point had said, reflecting on the occasion, that the world, his whole world, dropped out from under him. And any time he looked at the Irish countryside, that he just couldn't handle it. Everything reminded him of his sweetheart. So heartbroken and, uh, and unable to continue to live in a place that continually reminded him of his lost love, he moved to Canada, just outside of Ontario. Unfortunately, he didn't move with any real intention, um, uh, and he didn't move toward something, which I talk a lot about in some of my other videos about why we make transitions in our lives. And this is a good example. He was heartbroken, had to move, but didn't move toward something. He didn't move toward a job, toward a position. He didn't move toward friends or family. And so when he moved, not having anything, brokenhearted, the only thing that he could do was turn and rely upon God. I think he was especially moved and uh, I guess shaped by the Sermon on the Mount, this idea that we should truly go after the least of these. Um, and he was really living into, um, uh, into, into these ideas by intentionally volunteering his time to help the needy, the poor, the homeless. The crazy thing is, he wasn't far from these people, these destitute folks. He was penniless, he was poor, he was homeless, and in a place where it was not his original homeland. It just wasn't. He was in Canada after coming from Ireland, but he was doing what he could and what he thought was right. And so, you know, I think that's a beautiful thing. Soon after moving to Ontario, or just outside of Ontario, he 
heard uh, about his mom who was, who was going through a, a rough time, and he wrote this hymn out in honor of her in, to, in order to encourage his mother who was going through a time of sorrow. Uh, and so we'll get to the words later, but it really was of great encouragement. And upon uh, someone else seeing the, the a manuscript of the hymn, I guess he made several copies, uh, in, a, in, a, in a drawer or in a desk of some kind, uh, and reading it and really appreciating what Joseph had written, he said, did you really write this? And Joseph uh, famously uh, is, is said to have said, God and I both did this thing. And so he was really humble about it um, and was able to pass along the, the ability of creation and creativity onto the creator. He was humble even in, uh, in receiving praise from an another one of his friends. Well, at some point in his, uh, in his Canadian life, his new life in Canada, he found to, he learned rather to love again. He found himself someone he, he thought he could spend the rest of his life with. And so, again, he, dis he was engaged to be married. When, unfortunately, tragedy struck again, twice. So his second fiance also died, but this time to an unexplained or, or uh, unforeseen illness. So again, and possibly for the final time, heartbroken, still penniless, still poor, still homeless, jumping from, from home to home, friend to friend, you know, living hand to mouth, as they say. He really had not much going on in his life, and you can understand how a person like that might feel down in the dumps. And so it's said that he struggled with depression. What we understand now is depression. But uh, he continued to try and live out his life's cause, his purpose in life, what he thought was his purpose, which was to try and help those who were less fortunate than him, if there was such a thing. Unfortunately, this put off a lot of his friends, and it alienated him from his, the people who were supporting him, who were housing him. So he truly, truly ended up homeless. One night in the late 1800s, Joseph Scribben drowned. It's unknown or unclear whether or not he did this on purpose, whether it's part of an accident. But either way, it was, a, it was a tragic end to a tragic life, one full of loss. But it's so amazing. It's amazing how God used Joseph, his story, and his poetry to encourage so many others who were struggling just like he was. Now let's listen to the text. It has three verses, um, and it's really interesting because um, it, there's something about this idea of never letting go of your faith, that you find purpose even in volunteer work, um, but even if you ultimately lose the battle, you know, with something like mental illness, which is, a, which is something we understand far better now than we did then, it's amazing how God still uses situations and stories like Joseph's for his good and for the betterment of his kingdom and to encourage those who trust in him, even today. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered, with a load of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise? Forsake thee, 
take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. Such a beautiful and encouraging word to us uh, today as it was all those years ago in the 1800s. And I think we can go with the encouragement that just like several of the other hymns we've, we, we know we love, it's amazing how God uses the stories of both the hymn writers, the creation of the hymn itself, like this one, who was made to console a, a mother in a distant homeland in a letter. And the poetry is interesting because it really isn't that complex. It's not like, you know, Fanny Crosby texts who are, who, who are su uh, super heavy with theology and with, with double meanings. This is really more of a, of a, there's a simplicity there, but there's still the authenticity that comes behind or alongside someone who is living a life fully devoted as a follower of Christ. I think that's a beautiful thing. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, and if you are like Mary Archer, uh, thanks again for, for su suggesting this hymn. If you're like her, and you're a first-time watcher or a second-time watcher, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content just like this. At any rate, really do appreciate your, your watching, and I hope you're having a great and wonderful day. Go in peace.